I was speaking to the Better Business Bureau's uh, Southeast Louisiana meeting, nicely attended by a number of folks from about a 12 parish area. I would like to introduce our guest speaker. Jay Darden was re-elected to a four-year term as Louisiana's Lieutenant Governor in October 2011. He previously served one year in that position, filling an unexpired term. He also served four years as Secretary of State and 15 years as a state senator. During his legislative service, he chaired the Senate Finance Committee. In 2003, he was named National Republican Legislator of the Year. He is an active community volunteer, having hosted the Jerry Lewis Telethon for the Muscular Dystrophy Association for more than 30 years. Lieutenant Governor Dorden conducts a presentation entitled, Why Louisiana Ain't Mississippi. A lively and colorful book, a lively and colorful look at Louisiana's culture, history, music, and politics. He is an attorney and graduate of Baton Rouge High School, Louisiana State University, and the LSU Law Center. He is married to the former Kathy McDonald, and they have two grown sons, John and Matthew. Everyone, let's give a round of applause for our guest speaker, Jay Darden. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Uh, my wife and I raised two teenage boys. I'm very used to speaking while people are eating and not listening. So um, you go right ahead and, and continue enjoying uh, your meal, and I'll talk a little bit about, uh, about Louisiana and some of the business uh, opportunities that await our state, and then leave time for some questions if, if you have some. Um, when I was Secretary of State, we had a gentleman that did some volunteer work for us who was a retired university professor from LSU. Uh, he was not unlike most university professors, and I cast no aspersions, but he was uh, very confident, very sure of himself. He had all the answers. Uh, and he and his wife celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary while he was working with us, and I had the good fortune of taking them to lunch the week after their anniversary celebration. And sitting around the lunch table making small talk, I asked the obvious question, what's the secret to 50 years of happy marriage? And his wife, uh, or the, the professor, cleared his throat as if to pontificate and give me the obvious answer. But before he could utter a word, his wife said, we're both in love with the same man. <laughs> so ladies, uh, if the shoe fits at some point in time. Uh, well, I'm, I'm in love with Louisiana. And uh, it's a good thing because the job I do en enables me to wake up every day and think about what we can do to promote this state and encourage people to uh, come visit Louisiana and spend money. And I want to take a few minutes and talk to you about the business of tourism and what it means to our state, uh, what it means to the, the parishes that are represented in the room today. Uh, tourism is a big business and it's often not viewed that way. It's often viewed as just an afterthought. If we've got a little extra money, maybe we'll throw it at tourism. Uh, or it's a luxury that uh, is not really an essential in the operation of government. Um, I'm here to suggest to you that's not necessarily the case. We have had two record-breaking years in a row for Louisiana tourism. More people visiting this state than any time in our history, not just post-Katrina, not just post-oil spill, but any time in our history. Uh, we were real pleased in 2012 with our bicentennial year where we broke records for attendance in the state and money spent in the state, but uh, we couldn't rest on those laurels very long because last year, 2013, proved to be our biggest year ever. 27.3 million people visited Louisiana. They spent $10.8 billion. They left behind $807 million in state sales tax dollars that were not paid by anybody in this room, none of your businesses, uh, none of your friends, no Louisiana citizen. Almost a billion dollars that was contributed to Louisiana's tax base by people who don't live here. Uh, that's a big business. And it's also the, the fifth largest employer in the state of Louisiana, with one out of every 10 jobs being in the hospitality industry. And some of you I know are in, in that business, just listening to the membership and knowing some of the folks in the room. Uh, you understand the significance of people visiting Louisiana, and, and we do too. That's what our responsibility is. My responsibility is to run the Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism, which includes all the things that make Louisiana special and Louisiana unique. Our state park system, our state museum system, our state library, uh, the arts life of Louisiana and all its manifestations, the visual arts, the, 
performing arts, the culinary arts, uh, the seafood promotion and marketing board, which was moved to our office about a year ago by the legislature, uh, a federally funded program called Volunteer Louisiana, which coordinates all the disaster response volunteer efforts as well as works with volunteer organizations throughout the state, and then most importantly, tourism, which really is uh, an umbrella over all those various entities within our, within our operation because all those things contribute to what makes Louisiana a place that people want to visit. Now, tourism is funded exclusively in Louisiana with three one-hundredths of a penny of sales tax. Every time somebody buys something, three one-hundredths of a penny of sales tax goes to the Louisiana Office of Tourism. On average, that generates about $22 million a year, which would be, frankly, uh, more than adequate, I think, to cover what we need to do by way of promoting Louisiana. You can always use more, but I think that would be certainly an adequate uh, amount of money to do what I'd like to see us do. But unfortunately, a significant amount of that money is peeled off, at least has been in the past several years, by the governor and by the legislature and directed to other purposes. And we have had to dip into that tourism budget, unfortunately, uh, to fund the operations of some of the other areas of our department. For example, our newest museum in Louisiana is the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame in Natchitoches. It's a beautiful building that's winning international architectural awards and inside it celebrates Louisiana's passion for sports and the history of Northwest Louisiana. There's no money in the state budget to fund the operation of that museum. All the other museums in, in the state that are under our jurisdiction are funded through the state general fund, but that one is not. So unless I wanted to shutter the doors on a $20 million new construction in Louisiana, uh, we've had to divert money from the tourism account to make sure we keep the museum open. Uh, there's no money for arts grants in the state. And our uh, decentralized arts program enables local communities to make decisions on how to allocate grants for artistic endeavors in their community, which are in smaller communities some of the fundamental building blocks for the economy of those communities. So we've had to take about a million and a half dollars that otherwise would be spent to advertise and market Louisiana out of state and make sure that we provide these grants so that our Office of Cultural Development can have a meaningful arts program in Louisiana. I tell you this for the, for the purpose of explaining how it doesn't make a lot of sense to me for the state not to recognize uh, the dividends that are paid by enabling us to spend money to advertise and market Louisiana. All of you are in business. All of you to different degrees have an advertising budget. You recognize you've got to tell people who you are and where you are and what you offer. Bill, I know you're on TV all the time advertising uh, your outfit and it's been around for a long time, but you've got to remind people where you are and who you are and what you do. And the same is true in the very competitive world of tourism. The state of Florida increased its tourism budget last year by $22 million. They spend almost $75 million on tourism. Florida obviously is a state that's one of the top places for visitation in America. I don't need $22 million, but I need to be able to compete with that because we're trying to convince people, particularly uh, retirees and people who who uh, spend winters in the South, that they ought to think about spending their time in Louisiana and not where they go every year to Florida. We've got to compete with them. Tennessee, another state comparable to Louisiana, increased its tourism budget dramatically last year. Point is, we've got to compete. We've got to be able to get our message out because just as people make decisions as to whether or not to go to your business or some other business, they make travel decisions based upon the information that's made available to them that kind of piques their interest and tells them, I might want to spend some time in that state. And I, I would suggest to you that there is no state better than Louisiana in terms of offering uh, to a traveler the kind of things that people are usually looking for when they travel. Um, food, great food, it's obviously a, a staple of who we are in Louisiana. Uh, we're going to put an emphasis on Louisiana food in 2015 in all of our advertising uh, messages. Won't just be food, but we're going to, we, we have commercials already prepared, they're going to hopefully uh, tempt people to want to come to Louisiana and enjoy all the food that we sometimes take for granted. Two years ago, we, or last year rather, we focused on Louisiana music. And another one of the great draws to Louisiana, people who want to hear jazz and want to hear all the different types of music that uh, make Louisiana so popular and so famous. This year we're focusing on 
the entire culture of Louisiana and how there are things that you will find only in Louisiana. And that's kind of our theme and that's what our messaging is this year. All three of these messages run together and they all, uh, we offer all of that to people as they're making decisions, but we just turn a little spotlight on those individual things in each of those years. Last year, for example, the year of music, I compiled a list, a basketball fan, I'm sure many of you in the room are as well, so I got to thinking that we ought to have a bracket, as the NCAA does, to identify the most popular song or the greatest song in Louisiana music history. And everybody could make their own bracket and kind of decide what these great songs were. I made mine and I broke it down into four, bracket, four brackets, as you see in the basketball tournament. I had the um, gumbo bracket, the whole, call the whole thing the gumbo bracket, and I had the, uh, the New Orleans bracket basically, and the rice bracket, which was kind of for country music, and the spice bracket was for uh, Zydeco and Cajun music, and then a little land yap for everything else. And at least on my list, the final four came down to Jambalaya by Hank Williams. These were going to be songs by Louisianians or by uh, artists who sang about Louisiana. So my final four was Jambalaya by Hank Williams. Uh, Louisiana 1927 by Randy Newman, that, that great song that, that became nationally known after uh, Katrina. Um, when the Saints Go Marching In by Louis Armstrong and You're My Sunshine by Governor Jimmy Davis. And we put it out on Facebook, had a little vote for, for several weeks, and the winner of the most popular greatest song in Louisiana music history was what? You Are My Sunshine. That's exactly right. It's a close vote over when the Saints go marching in, but it'd be interesting to see, and I've talked about this before, to see what groups' reactions are, and I, I did this at our annual tourism summit, and I went through all 64 of the songs, and everybody would boo as I would eliminate uh, a song, but uh, imagine how many other states, and I would suggest to you there are very few, that could compile a bracket of 64 songs by people born in their state or about their state. California could do it, Florida could do it, New York could do it, but then you start thinking beyond those and coming up with 64 songs is kind of hard. I have to leave some out on the Louisiana bracket because there's just so, so much. And people appreciate all the music that makes uh, Louisiana special. Now another aspect of, of tourism I want to mention is, and this is important to people in business in Louisiana, is the international tourism market. Uh, there is so much identity with Louisiana by folks from French-speaking countries, folks who have a Spanish background in particular, who identify with Louisiana. When they come here, they, they feel at home. And it's because of this interesting mix of cultures that exists in Louisiana that I'm going to mention in just a second. Um, but international travelers stay longer in a destination, they spend more money, and they're more curious about where they're visiting, which means they're most likely to enter Louisiana through New Orleans, of course, that's where they're most interested in, that's where air service is, is best available. Uh, but they're also curious and they're willing to drive. They're used to driving, particularly around Europe, and they're willing to go venture out and, and see what it looks like in other parts of the state. So we want to make sure we increase our international travel. In fact, last year we just learned a couple of weeks ago that Louisiana increased its international visitation in 2013 by 18%. Uh, that was the largest percentage increase of any state in the United States of America. So we're on to something. We've got more international visitors coming and we want to keep that up. And the reason why is, is kind of the answer to why Louisiana ain't Mississippi and that is why Louisiana ain't any other state in America. We're unlike any other place in America because of the interesting cultural mix that exists here in our state. And, and just to put it in perspective very quickly, think about 3,500 years ago, there were Native Americans at a little place in northeast Louisiana called Poverty Point. Uh, we, it's named for a plantation that was later named Poverty Plantation, but 3,500 years ago, this was a very sophisticated society. Six settlements in concentric circles around a common plaza, and the tallest mounds in North America at the time were built by Native Americans 3,500 years ago. They didn't have backhoes, they didn't have anything to transport dirt, but imagine these mounds didn't simply exist, they had to be built. And they were built by these people who went out and got hundreds of thousands of baskets of dirt from the Mississippi River near Lake Providence. Poverty Point is a suburb of Epps, Louisiana. 
which is a suburb of Delhi, Louisiana. It's a suburb of Monroe, Louisiana, to put it in perspective for you, this South Louisiana crowd. Uh, but this site, Poverty Point, was nominated by the U.S. Secretary of the Interior to become a World Heritage Site. And we learned in June of this year that it had been selected as only the 22nd place in America and only the 1,001 place in the world to be so designated. And we will dedicate that, uh, that designation next month and on October the 11th. And we really believe this is going to be a driver of economic activity in a very impoverished part of Louisiana where people will now come to see a World Heritage Site and where there will have to be business enterprises to, to support what we believe will be the increase in tourism. A little place in New Mexico, a very remote place, one of the previous 21 sites in America, is about 50 miles off the interstate and about three miles into a bumpy, lumpy dirt road that you have to get to to see this Native American site. Poverty Point is 20 minutes off of I-20 and it is at the intersection, or if you will, of, of it's triangulated by Monroe, Louisiana, Vicksburg, Mississippi, and Southern Arkansas. We think there's great synergy that could be created among these three states to create a tour opportunity for people who would see a Civil War site, a Native American site, and the beauty of South Arkansas. So we think there's a whole lot of potential there and we're excited about it. Um, it's, it only takes 20 minutes to get to Poverty Point off of I-20. So uh, this other place increased its tourism from 10,000 people a year to 30,000 people a year, the year after it was designated as a World Heritage Site. So that certainly bodes well for what I'm hoping is going to happen. So anyway, Native Americans are here 3,500 years ago. A Spaniard named DeSoto discovers the Mississippi River in the mid-1500s. A Frenchman named Robert LaSalle explores that Mississippi River a century later in the mid-1600s and names Louisiana for his boss, King Louis XIV. And then a couple of French-Canadian brothers named Iberville and Bienville come here and explore this entire Mississippi River Valley from Mobile to Biloxi to Louisiana. And when they got to Louisiana, they created the opportunity for the first settlement in our state in Natchitoches, Louisiana, it's celebrating its tricentennial this year. And New Orleans was founded four years after that in 1718. And when that happened, the floodgates opened, if you will, for people to come to this new land, to this new territory that was called Louisiana. And they came by the thousands. French aristocrats, uh, Germans, Sicilians, Irishmen, from all over Europe, more Spaniards, and they settled in Louisiana. And they brought with them, not by choice, Africans from the west coast of Gambia who came as slaves because that was a well-established institution in Europe at the time. And all of these different ethnicities began merging together and the union of the individuals formed what makes Louisiana truly unique and that's our Creole population that you don't find anywhere else in America to any degree of concentration except here. And it was only after the 1800s and the Louisiana Purchase occurred that some of your ancestors, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, first came to Louisiana because most of these Europeans were Catholic and they brought with them their Catholic faith. And when you think about the other ingredient I haven't mentioned, the Acadian pop people, the Cajun population of Louisiana, who came here after being exiled from Canada. They were hunters and fishermen and trappers and they were very clannish and family oriented. And after they got expelled from Nova Scotia, they wound up in Louisiana and man, this was Nirvana. This was the place to be. And so they got added to this whole mix of cultures that makes Louisiana unique. And it's for that reason that Louisiana ain't Mississippi or isn't in like any other state in the country. And it's why Louisiana has so much curiosity uh, and so much interest from people who know that Louisiana is just a little bit different. We were different in 1812 when we entered the Union and we're different today. Uh, think about what happened in 1812 when Louisiana petitioned to become a part of America. Think about Congress at the time, and I know I don't like to think about Congress either at all, but think about Congress at the time. They are white Anglo-Saxon Protestants from the 13 colonies in the four states that had been added before Louisiana. They looked at Louisiana when they're trying to decide whether or not to admit Louisiana to the Union, and they saw people of different skin hues and colors, uh, speaking different languages, uh, worshiping differently. And a lot of them said, we don't want a, this little slice of Europe coming back into 
America, we just fought for our freedom a few decades ago. But cooler heads prevailed and Louisiana was admitted as the 18th state in America. And it was different then and it's, it's different today. It's why we're, our politics is so interesting. It's why our food is so special. It's why our music is uh, different and prominent from other places in the country. It's because we're this wonderful mix of cultures that still is identifiable today. And it drives, it certainly drives decisions as to tourism and I suggest that it also drives decisions as to business. When people visit Louisiana, they seldom leave here and say, I never want to go back there again. It's usually, I can't wait till I can go back and see New Orleans again or go to another part of the state that I've never seen before. Go out in a swamp uh, or go to Monroe and see where these Duck Dynasty guys are uh, or experience uh, Cajun culture. There's a lot of curiosity, remember, by visitors and particularly international ones. Um, so if they visit Louisiana and come back, then they're most likely to want to think about investing in Louisiana, opening a business here. If they do that, then they're more likely to want to retire here. And the retirement effort in Louisiana has been very meager in the past, but it's got unlimited potential. Because what retirees today are looking for is exactly what we have to offer. Culture, recreational activities, a fun lifestyle, a relatively low tax base, which we actually have in Louisiana. Uh, the Kiplinger letter just announced two weeks ago that Louisiana was the third lowest state in America in terms of the tax burden on its citizens. We don't always feel that way, I know, but that's what this independent group has assessed. The, the Tax Foundation a couple of years ago had identified us as the fourth most attractive state. So this is certainly appealing to people who are on a fixed income who are looking to retire, and we need to take advantage of it. There's some unlimited there is unlimited potential, I should say, I think for our state over the course of the next decade when you look at the, the activity that is going to be taking place in Louisiana. A projection of literally $70 billion or more of economic activity in Louisiana, particularly in South Louisiana, from Lake Charles headed east. Uh, as liquefied natural gas becomes a commodity that, that we are going to process in Louisiana and ship out to foreign countries instead of shipping it in. We've got natural gas, an abundance of natural gas in Louisiana, particularly in the Haynesville shale, which is kind of cranking up again. There's interest in the Tuscaloosa shale that can potentially produce natural gas that can be converted to uh, liquefied natural gas, which is a commodity that Europe is clamoring for right now because they have different environmental rules. They're looking for alternative fuel sources. And uh, Louisiana also is, is developing emerging markets for wood products. Um, we have timber is the largest agricultural crop in Louisiana. It still is. Um, the byproduct of a lot of the timber industry are wood chips that are being shipped down to, what, to West Baton Rouge Parish. If you see those two new facilities uh, right on the other side of the river, those big domes, uh, they're containing wood chips that are going to be sent overseas, again, to be used as an alternative fuel source. Um, Baton Rouge in our area with the coming of IBM and the facility that has been created can transform Baton Rouge's economy and South Louisiana's economy uh, with a need for more people with technical expertise in the computer area. And there are great things taking place right now in terms of cooperation, perhaps for the first time really meaningfully, between the Louisiana Community and Technical College System, which is only about a decade old. I, I sponsored the legislation that created that system when I was in the Senate and our institutions of four-year colleges, the Southern System, the LSU System, and the University of Louisiana System, and our Workforce Commission, which is the old Department of Labor, are all now talking to each other and working closely together to make sure they can accurately forecast jobs that are going to be created throughout the state and make certain that our educational effort is targeted to train people to be able to fill those jobs. And this is what we've got to be doing right now in Louisiana is training people to take the jobs that are going to be created because virtually every type of job that's coming to our state whether it's in the oil and gas industry or the petrochemical industry the agricultural industry many of which could be serviced by brawn in the past in the decades of the past now have to be serviced to some extent with brawn but also with brains because everything is computer operated now. Everything requires some degree of mathematical skills and Louisianians are not going to be able to get by in the future 
uh, by just going out and working on the oil rig based upon learning how to do it and physically handling the job. Uh, and I'm optimistic that because of the cooperation that's existing right now between these various entities, we're going to be able to train people for the type of work that Louisianians are going to have available to them in the not too distant future. Um, so I think there are tremendous business opportunities awaiting the state. The more that we can gin the economy, obviously, the more people are going to be in business, the more people are going to become customers of the services you provide, the goods that you sell, uh, and are potentially going to come, become productive and tax-paying citizens of Louisiana. So um, I think the future is bright, although we're going to have some difficult times in the years ahead in the short term because of the kind of budget problems and challenges Louisiana is facing. They're not going to simply go away with the advent of all this business, but hopefully within the next 10 to 15 years, we are going to have a, a climate in Louisiana that's going to be attractive to bring even more people to our state to work and enjoy and, and truly enjoy all the things that we Louisianians all too often take for granted, and that are the many passions that we have for food, for music, for recreational activity, uh, for festivals, and for the, the joie de vie that, that uh, all of us seem to feel about our great state. Tourism is a big business for the state, which is what my message was here today and what my message usually is, to make sure people, particularly people in business, understand that tourism is a driver of Louisiana's economy, creating jobs. It's the fifth largest employer in the state, um, and it generates tax revenue not paid by Louisianians. Last year in 2013, we had a record-setting year, $807 million in state sales tax generated by people who were visiting Louisiana, not our own citizens. So it's a huge contribution to the tax base of the state. What are some challenges that are currently facing the tourism industry? Competition, I guess I'd say, is the main thing. Everybody recognizes the importance of this industry. Some states are funding it more aggressively than we are, frankly, and it's, it's hard to keep up with the dollars they're spending to bring people to their state. Uh, but otherwise, tourism is really doing well. We have had two record-setting years in a row. We think this is going to be a tremendous year as well. So uh, that's good for business in Louisiana. And people, as I said today, seldom come here and say, I never want to go back again. It's usually, I can't wait to get back to Louisiana. And then maybe they'll invest in the state, and maybe they'll, they'll ultimately retire here.